Hello, my name is Matt Sanger. I'm uh, in, currently pioneering in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, we've been there for three years now. My expectations for this conference are uh, personal growth, God giving me direction for our congregation, and then also uh, I'd love to see God radically move upon my children's lives and just give them direction for their own future. I would really love to see a church planted in Naples, Florida. Uh, it's just south of where we are, but a uh, very powerful uh, uh, place that, that could be touched. Uh, it's filled with uh, a lot of diversity, uh, a very good Guatemalan population uh, that has recently uh, developed there, popped up there. Um, but it would be a wonderful place to see a church planted. Okay, my name is Vikash Jagai. I'm pastoring in Durban, South Africa. I'm here with my family this week, and we are believing God to speak to us and to help us and to give us a unction of the Holy Ghost that we can take back to our city in Durban, in South Africa. Uh, we believe in God to uh, help us and give us some vision and direction uh, personally that we can take back to our church and to cast vision there and take the spirit of what's happening here back uh, to Durban and uh, yeah we just believe in God to uh, minister to us and encourage us. I've been to more than one this is probably my fifth uh, time here to Prescott and God has really moved every time we've come there were specific things we believe in God for and uh, he really met with us and this time we believe in God specifically for for breakthrough in our church uh, for miracles for growth enlargement disciples and so I'm believing by the time we get back, we'll have some new families to work with. I would love for more churches to be planted into Durban, South Africa. Okay, my name is Manuel Vasquez and my wife Patty Vasquez. We are pastoring on the beautiful city of Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, I, we just come hungry. We ready to hear from God and then God has been speaking to us last Sunday. I got confirmation from God telling me that he's going to open doors and then I'm going to step out in a, a sober, natural uh, ways. So I'm just, I'm just hungry for uh, hearing God's voice in this conference. You know what, it's kind of funny because we just went there. We've been there for six months in Charlotte, but it's a huge city, almost a million people. And then it's space for another 10, 20 churches. So we just, you know, if they send somebody there, we can be rejoicing. My name is Cruzito Valdez, but I go by Cruz. Uh, currently, I live in 29 Palms. Um, it's a really nice town. I, I enjoy it. I've been going for a few months, not too long. I, I've just been introduced to the Potter House. I really enjoy the community there, and it's a very loving family, and I really appreciate them a lot. They've done a lot for me. Truthfully, I don't really know what to expect. Uh, it's my first conference, and I really hope that like, God actually touches me and I actually feel something, and I hear God, like I hear from God, and I just really want to get something out of this and it just not be a, another like vacation. For me, this is a rough question because I had to put some thought into it, but I want to see a church planted in Palm Springs, and there's a lot of reasons why I say that. I feel like it'd be a good challenge for, not for God, but for our, our people. 
because I know that there's people that need to be touched there and they need to hear the word of God because I feel that some of them need to feel the love of God and it'll really help them. My name is Nehemiah Brook. I'm from the West Las Vegas Church. This is my first time going, to, well, it's not my first time coming to Prescott. It's my first time coming to conference. First time I went to Prescott was for the youth rally. And my, one of my expectations are for the conference is you forgot just to do big things and you forgot to do a mighty work in me, you forgot to speak to me and just, you know, just contending for a revival. Where I would like to see a church planted, I would say probably Oregon, because it's, it's not that much talked about, really. And so definitely, you know, want to, want to see Soul Saved there. My name is Casey Wilson and I'm from 29 Palms. My expectations for the concert conference is to get closer with God, um, learn a lot more about it, get, get more experience in my faith and get closer with that and um, my marriage, grow my marriage and just me as a person. I would like to see a church planted in St. Louis, Missouri where I'm from. Hi, I'm Zach Wilson and I'm from 29 Palms. The expectations for this conference are kind of just get closer to God learn about him more in ways that I didn't know before and ways that he can help better my marriage and make me and my wife closer together. I would like to see a church planted in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I'm from Amarillo, Texas and my name's Vienna Valdez. I think my expectation for the conference is just like God to just uh, fill me up with the Holy Spirit, just more fire and just light me up more and, and just um, just to be closer to God in general, that's it. I would like to see a church planted in Bin Lin, um, New Mexico.
you begin to find your seats this evening, let's sing that song, lift the name of Jesus as we clap tonight. God gave his one and only son. God gave his one and only son to come as one of us, to die so that we might live. Let us take this moment of our day, turn it into praise, offer it as a gift to our King, to our Lord, for he reigns forevermore. Praise and worship are yours, heaven and earth sing for joy. Takes the sky, let your name be lifted high over nations and kings, over death we can see Jesus glorified. Let your name be lifted high. God gave his one and only son, and God gave his one and only son to come as one of us so that we might live. Let us take this moment of our day, turn it into praise, offer it as a gift to our King, to our Lord, for He reigns forevermore. Praise and worship are yours, heaven and earth sing for joy. Like an eagle takes the sky, let your name be lifted high. Over nations and kings, over death we can see Jesus glorified. Let your name be lifted high. Oh, lift the name of Jesus. Lift the name of Jesus high. Lift the name of Jesus high. Lift the name of Jesus high. Jesus, let your name be lifted high. Lift the name of Jesus high. Lift the name of Jesus high. Lift the name of Jesus high. Jesus, let your name be lifted high. Praise and worship are yours. Heaven and earth sing for joy. Like an eagle takes the sky. Let your name be lifted high Over nations and kings Over death we can see Jesus glorified Let your name be lifted high Let your name be lifted high One more time, let your name Let your name be lifted high Amen. Let's stand in this place as we sing that song. Great things as we clap tonight. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. God has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive. You break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom. Awaken. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You've been faithful to them. You've been faithful through every storm, and you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. I know you will do it again For your promise is yes and amen You will do great things God, you do great things Oh, hero of heaven, you come 
conquered the grave You free every captive You break every chain Oh God, you have done great Our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things, oh hallelujah, hallelujah God, above it all, hallelujah God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, hallelujah. Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things, oh hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive, you break every chain, oh God, you have done great Your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things, you have done great things, oh God, you do great things. Hallelujah. Let's sing that song, we believe for it. They say this mountain. say this mountain can be moved they say these chains will never break but they don't know you like we do there is power in your name we've heard we've heard that there is no way Heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the unmovable. God, we believe, God, we believe for it, from the impossible, we'll see a miracle, God, we believe, God, we believe for it, we know that word, we know that hope is never
Let's give God praise tonight, Lord. We thank you. Father God, you are faithful. You are worthy of all praise and glory. Father God, we magnify and exalt and glorify your great and holy name. Thank you, Jesus, you are faithful. Hallelujah. As we open our service tonight, our Tuesday night of conference, we want to open in prayer. We want to lift up Vincent Lee Jr. This is a three-month-old that was uh, air evac to Las Vegas, is in ICU, needs a miracle there. We want to pray for anointing uh, tonight upon Pastor Joe Campbell as he ministers that this altar space is going to be a meeting place with God. Decisions are going to be made for God. We want to lift up the, uh, uh, the conference, all that God is doing, encouragement and strength. We want to pray for these needs. And then evangelist Roderick Gonzalez from El Paso, Texas is going to come and open us in prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we have access to your throne of grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we lift up each and every need before you. God, I pray, let there be anointing upon this service each and every report God anointing upon the preaching let this altar space be a meeting place with you minister to the pioneer pastor give encouragement strengthening father God we call upon you Lord. hallelujah God we come before you tonight and we ask you God by your grace that you would open the windows of heaven tonight upon this service. I pray, God, for each and every life, God, to be touched. I pray for anointing, God, yea, at this altar tonight. God, we pray for anointing, Lord God, for our pastor, Pastor Campbell. God, I pray every word, God, that would proceed from his mouth, God, would be anointed, God, and would land, God, in every heart and every life. God, we pray, God, for every individual, God, who needs healing. God, we pray, stretch forth your hand and do a mighty work, God, tonight. We yield, God, to whatsoever your hearts desire. And we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would breathe upon this service. Lives would be changed, touched, and transformed. And we are so thankful. God, for this family that you have made us a part of, we thank you in the name of Jesus in advance for what you're going to do tonight. In the name of Jesus, we come before you in Jesus' name. And God's people said tonight, amen. Praise God. Amen. You can be seated this evening. Uh, we just want to say welcome to our Tuesday night uh, service and to all who are joining us online throughout this week. We do appreciate you uh, tuning in. Just some announcements. First off, prayer. Uh, it happens here in the main sanctuary at 8 a.m. And here is where we pray. You can fellowship in the hallways, you can fellowship in the lobby, but let's keep the sanctuary for prayer. Then tomorrow our morning seminars begin at 9 a.m. And tomorrow's uh, pastors that are going to be ministering is Nigel Brown, Pakia Raj, and Harold Warner. For conference media, all of the media is available for free this conference. You can download each service by going to prescottpottershouse.com, click on the conference or media banner at the top of the page, or you can simply go to our media kiosk in the west main entrance, scan the QR code, and have full access there. Tomorrow is going to be our pastor's meeting, and this uh, is immediately following the final morning seminar. So if you can be planning in advance to help us clear out of the auditorium as quickly as possible, that'll be a tremendous help there. For the business meeting, pastors, if you have new evangelists, please get their name uh, to Pastor Greg Mitchell, 
who will be speaking for them, and please get us also their phone and e email information. We need to get that to Pastor Greg, if you could do that uh, uh, as quickly as possible for tomorrow's meeting. If you are planting churches, please get the names and information to Pastor Greg also as soon as possible. Then uh, we have a brand new 180 facility. Concert ministry has been going on now for 54 years. Amen. Yes. And Thursday afternoon between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., if you would like to tour the facility, go see uh, uh, this brand new building that's at 6050 East State Route 69. Uh, you can scan the QR code, also gets you uh, the map uh, uh, there. So uh, do want to just make that available from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Thursday afternoon. Then online giving, we have... The Secure Give app, you can uh, download that. We also have online giving through our website. You can also text to uh, numbers that are going to be on the screen. And tonight's keyword is CT for Conference Tuesday. You'll put that keyword, then the amount. If you're giving in person, uh, checks can be made to the Potter's House. Amen. That's all of the announcements for this evening. We're going to hear some reports, and each pastor is going to tell us their name, their wife's name, where they are ministering, what God is doing. We're going to hear from these pastors in this order, Wes Neary, John Duff, Luis Enrique Hurtado, TJ Horta, Richard Tadwa, and Manny Vasquez. Let's welcome Wes Neary. Hello, uh, my name is Wes Neary. Um, uh, my amazing wife and Miracle Twins and I were launched out of the January 2022 Winter Conference into Juba, South Sudan. We landed in June and began witnessing and preaching on the street corners. Uh, uh, very quickly, uh, we saw people getting saved. Um, we began to have amazing contacts. Uh, I had a man who uh, was uh, having trouble leaving his shop to take me to different places. His name was Magal, and so he introduced me to a guy. He said, this guy is a Boda Boda driver and he will not kill you, and so, uh, he, uh, his name was Abraham Majak. Uh, he took me around town. He helped me to find uh, the government buildings that I needed to find uh, to start to try to register the church, uh, start to try to find out and get my bearings. Um, as we went around, he started seeing me go uh, into places and outreach and uh, preach the gospel wherever I was. I would just preach in English. No one would understand me. And then someone would kindly walk up and say, I can help you. I speak Arabic. And so we would see people raising their hands on the street, getting saved. And Majak, by the end of the day, he looked over at me and he said, um, are you really going to build a church here? I said, yeah. I said, do you want to help me? He said, why not? I said, that's my kind of guy. We need you to get saved. Uh, I prayed a sinner's prayer with him right there on the back of his boda boda. Um, and uh, he started taking me and my son for motorcycle rides uh, through the city of Juba. Later on, uh, we lost some things. Um, he, Majak insisted that I go to a prison and try to find uh, my two tablets and my wife's passport. I said, there's no way. God redeemed the time. I looked up and there were men in an open air prison, um, about a hundred of them. They were behind bars. I said, God, this is a waste of time. This man is writing in Arabic. It's backwards and I don't understand it. Uh, so uh, I said to the man, can I talk to those men after we're done? He said, sure. I went up to the men. I began to uh, ask the men, is there anyone here who speaks English? Uh, they pushed a man to the front. Um, as the man looked at me with just total fear in his eyes, I began to preach and a little man came up next to me and he said, I can help you. I speak English. I began to preach the gospel to these men. All of those men, they raised their hand to receive Jesus Christ. 
they were crying. And uh, God did amazing things. God bless you. Good evening, my name is John. My wife's name is Dana. Together with our three kids, we are pioneering in the city of Sarasota, Florida. We're having a great time. God is really helping us. When we got home from conference in July, we had a revival with uh, evangelist Micah Wright. It was an awesome time. We, uh, we saw many new visitors come out to that. We saw many people that were saved uh, and healed. Words of knowledge were given, and uh, Micah did a fantastic job. We continued uh, after that with our movie in the park outreaches. We were able to reach numbers of people with the gospel in our community. We had new converts in the church uh, that were helping us with that and witnessing to people. In that, we saw 15 people give their lives to Jesus. We also closed out our, uh, our new year, our year this year, with a Christmas play. Rochester, New York, they uh, were kind enough to send us out a team, and they performed a play called Ebenezer. It was, uh, it was an amazing performance. They did a great job. We saw 18 new visitors come to the church, and five people were saved in that. In our church, we are seeing converts making decisions for righteousness. Uh, they're getting married, leaving their old life behind. We're seeing people catch revelation, and their lives are being transformed. When I got sent out, Pastor Jesse Cluck, he gave me a word that God was going to bring people into the church that were just like I was. And recently I had an organization, they reached out to me and they asked if, if they would be able to hold uh, recovery meetings in our church. And after praying about it and talking with my pastors, we decided to go ahead with it. And a week and a half ago, we opened our doors and we began these meetings. And what's awesome is these meetings are going to bring 3,000 drug addicts and alcoholics through our doors on a monthly basis. And these people are very open to the gospel. Already we are seeing many new visitors uh, coming from these meetings into our regular services and getting saved. And they also asked me to begin sharing my testimony with the different meeting groups, very large uh, groups, and so we're super excited about that. And then this last Friday, the local ABC news station actually reached out to me, and they said they had seen my testimony on our website. They heard what we were doing with the local recovery group and what we were doing in the community. And they said they would love to come and do an interview with me and do a story on, the, on us at the church. And I was able to share my testimony of how Jesus Christ transformed my life and set me free from a life of addiction on the evening news. Yes, praise God. There has been a tangible shift in the church. It feels alive. We're looking forward to all that God is going to do in Sarasota. Thank you to the Prescott congregation. We love you guys. Thank you to my pastors, Pastor Greg, Pastor Jesse, and thank you to my amazing wife, Dana. God bless. Bueno, mi nombre es Luis Enrique Hurtado. My name is Luis Enrique Hurtado. Mi esposa Lorena. My wife Lorena. Estamos pastoreando la iglesia de San Luis Río Colorado. We're pastoring in the church of San Luis Río Colorado. En los últimos seis meses the hemos mirado la mano de Dios. In the last six months, we've seen the hand of God Realizando milagros de sanidad. doing miracles of healing. Gente se está a la iglesia. People are being added to the church. Hemos tenido milagros financieros. We've had financial miracles. La iglesia está en avivamiento. The church is in revival. Cada domingo, los hermanos salen al parque. Every Sunday, all the brothers go to the park. Predican a la gente. And they begin to invite people. De 20 a 30 personas se salvan. And we get see 20 to 30 people getting saved. Recientemente en noviembre, Recently, in the last November, tuvimos nuestra conferencia, we've had our conference en San Luis. In, in San Luis. Se anunciaron seis obras nuevas. We announced six new churches. Y una, y una obra internacional en Venezuela. And one international church in Venezuela. Amen. Dios nos está ayudando, God, a Dios. And God is really helping us, praise God. Tuvimos como predicadores, we've had the following preachers invitados, and guests al Pastor Jesse Morales, Pastor, Jesse Morales Pastor, Gagiola, Pastor Jose Luis Gagiola el Pastor Richard Cox, Pastor Richard Cox y los pastores de nosotros, and pastors from our fellowship trayendo in, dirección. bringing us direction Quiero dar gracias a todos los pastores, I want to thank all the pastors 
que han ido a ayudarnos, that have come to help you predicando, preaching y a la iglesia, and bringing direction to our church I also want to thank my pastor Greg Mitchell, my pastor Greg Mitchell a su esposa Lisa, his wife Lisa a la de Prescott, thank you to the congregation of Prescott su ayuda, for all your help los amamos, we love you Dios les bendiga. God bless you My name is T.J. Horta. My wife, Christina, and I were sent out of the January 2019 conference into Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Uh, after three and a half years there, we uh, were moved up to Da Nang, Vietnam, and been there almost a year and a half, and uh, it's, been, it's been a wild ride, amen. Uh, we have 16 churches total in the nation, uh, and one more is on its way. Uh, in 2023 was a great year. We had Pastor Ruby come out. He did an area-wide rally. All the churches came together. Pastor Boyd also came down and did an area-wide rally. And uh, it was really good for the churches, for us to be able to join together. I was able to take one worker down from Da Nang with us to join us. Uh, we're reaching loads and loads of people in Da Nang. Uh, we hold uh, outreach events. We'll have 29 people, 43 people, 32 people come out. Uh, our main outreach is an English club where we offer and teach free English. And from all these converts uh, we're making, or, or all these people, we're making new contacts. We're just trying to build relationships, trying to build trust with these people. So they'll, they'll begin to even trust what we're telling them about the gospel. And trying to get them into a Wednesday or Sunday service has proven to be easier said than done. They'll come to an English club. They really want to learn English. So this is the hook. This is how we get them in. We cannot evangelize the way we do here, uh, uh, the way we do here in the States. So we scan barcodes. We go out. We meet new people. And they scan. It connects them to our website, connects them to a messenger, to our WhatsApp. And we just try to build relationships. And we really push the Tuesday night uh, English club. So we build a large group of people, and then we have Steve Zapata come do a revival, and it becomes decision time for them, and uh, some, uh, most of them leave, amen, but we keep contact. We build it up again, and then we have Pastor J.R. Stewart come with nine other people from the Phoenix Church, and uh, again, decision time, most leave, but we keep contact with them. We build it up again, then my children come for Thanksgiving, we do music, we do uh, preaching, my son preached four times, uh, and again, uh, most leave, but we keep the relationships, uh, and uh, it's, it's just been a wild ride, hallelujah. I'm praying for light switch conversions, I'm praying, uh, but it's uh, not been proven to be the, the, the reality there. We're just planting seed and waiting for it to grow, and, uh, and that's where we need the Holy Spirit to really lead us. They don't know nothing about the gospel there. 1% of the nation is Christian, and uh, I wish I had a stronger report, but we're just excited to be here. We're going to go back and continue to plow, continue to plant seed. Amen. I want to thank Pastor Paul and Andrea Tedesco, Pastor uh, Chad and Dale, uh, Jackie Dale, Pastor Les and Sally Uptain, and my pastor, Pastor Gooding. God bless you, Sister Esther. We love you. Pastor Greg, thank you for all your support. Amen. Pray for us in the name, and it's good to see you, Pastor Campbell. We're glad you're here tonight. Amen. My name is Richard Tadwa. My wife is Margaret. Uh, we took over the church in Kampala, Uganda in uh, uh, December 2001 from uh, Pastor Jim Raderstoff. And so we've been there all these years. And so for the last three years, we haven't been able to come to conference here because uh, we had a COVID effect there in Uganda and then we had uh, passport issues. Uh, but uh, uh, we had a long shutdown of COVID there in Uganda. But uh, COVID had a positive uh, effect on our country as far as the gospel is concerned. People became more receptive and more humble as we preached the gospel. So we took the opportunity to preach and uh, we joined together as churches in, in Kampala and in Uganda. We do joint outreaches for the different churches. And this had a, a tremendous impact on the churches after COVID. We saw, we are seeing many, many people saved on outreaches, many people saved in the churches, and uh, uh, the, um, uh, the churches are very, very excited. We had a, uh, two conference, uh, we had a conference in uh, uh, the other year, and of course in 2000, and uh, 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 this is, uh, 
of course, we have had two conferences in that time that I talked about. We had conference with uh, Brother Edward Safa from Sierra Leone, uh, but uh, last year we had a conference with uh, Pastor Jim Redestorff, and uh, we had a powerful team from Holland. This is one of the greatest conferences we've ever had. It had uh, an overflow crowd. We had people sitting outside. We were in a schoolhouse. We had two churches planted. And so what we need is we need a, a conference center, and we've started building that. And that has challenged the, uh, uh, challenged the, the African people, the Ugandan people, to believe God for finances. Uh, we are believing God to help us build that work. Um, and so we want to be thankful for uh, uh, my pastor, Jim Raderstoff, Pastor John Overson and their churches for their support coming over to Uganda. I want to thank the church here in Prescott, Pastor Greg Mitchell, and for investing in Uganda many, many years ago. Uh, this uh, church here invested, uh, sent a missionary to Uganda in 1987. Uh, I got saved. I joined the church. I've been there ever since. Uh, and I want to tell you, your investment is paying off. In Uganda, there is converts, there is disciples, and there is pastors. Um, Uganda, we are going to take Uganda for Jesus. Thank you very much. God bless you. Hello, everybody. My name is Manny Vasquez. Together with my beautiful wife, Patty, and my two kids, Israel and Jimena, we were sent from July Conference 2023 to the great city of Charlotte, North Carolina. We hit the ground running on September, and God take us exactly where we're supposed to be. We start witnessing and talking to people about our testimony and all that. We pray for many people. People were open. So God gave us a favor, and we able to rent a house almost right away. And then we start doing Bible studies on Friday. So first Bible study come. We got tons of contacts. First Bible study come. Nobody show up. So I talked to my wife. I said, no problem. We knew here. Nobody know that we here. So we did our second one. Third, four, five, six, seven. Same thing happened. So I said, hmm, these people, they don't like Fridays, I guess. So I changed it for Saturdays. Same thing happened. So I said, this is unacceptable. <laughs> so what I did, I'm glad you asked. I called my pastor, and I say to him, Pastor, I need to know God's address and telephone number because I need to talk to him. <laughs> God said in his word that if you give your life for God's purpose, he is faithful and true, and he will bring revival. So he did. My pastor gave me God's email. <laughs> so I bring my case before God, and as I was praying... I remember something about Pastor Wyman Mitchell always say. He said, food brings revival. So I talked to my wife. I said, get out the anointing turkey from the freezer and let's make it happen. <laughs> we, with the Thanksgiving around the corner, we make that dinner. Our two first family came. And then after that, we start doing service Sundays and Wednesdays. God has been good with us. Our service now running from 16 to 24 people. We have three families, faithful family, and we are rejoicing where God is doing in our midst. I want to thank Pastor Greg, my pastor, Pastor Diego, the Prescott congregation. I want to talk to the Tylersville congregation. Uh, please keep praying for us as we pray for you. It has a blessed conference. Praise God. Amen. Tremendous testimonies. Can you say amen? amen? I have the privilege to challenge the conference body to pay for the conference tonight. And that's exciting because in doing so, we have an opportunity to participate and cross over into what is known as a transcendent dimension. So let me explain that. Pastor Mitchell had a very powerful view of money. And the principles of his view came directly from the Word of God. And I remember learning these. I remember being the recipient of this revelation. This includes that we are not owners, we're stewards. Can you say amen? We're taking care of God's money. And he's 
very happy to release resources to us. The beginning of the stewardship is the tithe. We owe that to God. And when we bring that, we're not giving, we're paying it. We're paying the tithe. Tithe is not giving. It's only after we have paid our own way. It's only after the tithe. Then we begin to bring an offering, and that offering is now a seed. And there's something about bringing the seed that causes us to tap into a transcendent dimension. And what that means, it's a dimension that's beyond the natural, it's beyond the calculator, it's beyond the, 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 the normal, it is, it is supernatural. And it's fascinating that Pastor Mitchell built the conference on this principle. And it's very unusual and very indicative of this mindset that he does not charge Pastor Wayman Mitchell and now Pastor Greg Mitchell. They don't charge you to come to conference. And they even offer to sponsor, which means to, to uh, cover the costs of a room and even provide some meal money. And they count on four offerings during the week to pay for it. And that leaves Thursday for world evangelism where the action is. Can you say amen? amen. So I learned early in our ministry that, that small churches can come and many times they struggle to be able to pay for their delegates and yet they're still welcome. And I remember my first church in Las Vegas, Nevada and bringing delegates and thinking, how am I going to pay for them? and struggling to pay for them and making that my goal. In the meantime, the larger churches that have prospered are giving beyond the cost of their delegates and covering the churches that are smaller. And I remember as my ministry began to grow, it was put in me by these revelations that I need to and look forward to the day that I can not only pay my own way and pay the way of my delegates, but then I can give, then I can give, and I can plant a seed in that offering that will cover the expenses of the other delegates, but also release a miracle ministry and a miracle dimension, a transcendent dimension. This means, by definition, beyond or above the range of normal or merely physical human experience. It means exceeding the usual limits, surpassing, extending, or lying beyond the limits of the ordinary. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25, New King James. There is one who scatters and yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, and it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. That is a challenge of faith that says you can cross into a transcendent dimension. It's agricultural. It's the seed principle. You're foolish to take the seed and, and make you know food into it. You need to by faith, give some of it back to the earth. And the creative pro process of God, the, the, the sun and the, the rain and the nutrients of the soil cause a miracle to take place and causes that seed to multiply and a wise farmer learns to participate in this economy of God. Another translation said, some people give much but give back even more. Others don't give what they should, and they end up poor. Whoever gives to others will get richer. Those who help others will themselves be helped. That's what we need to do tonight. Tonight is Tuesday. Last night, I'm trusting you paid your way. And if you didn't, you can catch up tonight. But tonight we can give. Tonight we can now go beyond paying our own way and we can give because this is, cre this is built into creation. This isn't just for church. A number of stories that I, I learned of, a gift of a lifetime. A woman helped a stranded stranger by offering him a ride during a snowstorm. Years later, that same stranger turned out to be a wealthy investor who invested in her startup, turning it into a thriving company. An elderly couple, 
A group of volunteers helped renovate the home of an elderly couple who couldn't afford the repairs. Later, the couple's granddaughter, the elderly couple's granddaughter, who was a real estate agent, sold one of the volunteers' house at a higher price, giving them the substantial commission back as thank you. A benevolent landlord reduced the rent for a struggling tenant during tough times. When the tenant's business eventually thrived, they opened a chain of successful stores and offered the landlord a lucrative real estate partnership. This is built into creation. There is one who scatters and yet increases more. And there are those who hold more than they should and it tends to prop poverty. The generous soul will be made rich. He who waters others will be watered himself. How's that gonna work for us? Why don't you calculate what your responsibility is against the cost of this conference? This conference cost about $600,000. $750 for a sponsored delegate. Pastor Greg showed me that that's just under a half a million dollars this year. If, if that's you, then you, you really ought to be striving. You know what, I want to pay my own way here, and then I want to give. If you can't pay your own way, that's why you're sponsored. But if you can, I want to tell you, you release a miracle. You can release a dimension of God that will change the way you experience life. If you're not, if you're not sponsored, how many of you know this still costs money? This building costs money. This building was built for conference. Can you say amen? amen? On the platform, Pastor Greg asked a rhetorical question. How many are glad for the building when we're not in the tent? <laughs> how about we add, raise hand? How many of you vote for that? I'm glad for the building we're not in the tent. That means everybody has a responsibility right here. Why don't you calculate? your portion in that, figure out a reasonable estimate of what your cost is and then give something in faith to participate in the transcendent dimension of God. Two testimonies, hello, Pastor Payne. Hope you're doing well. I would like to share a testimony regarding what God has done for us financially. He described an offering where God dealt with them to give. The amount was a bit more out of our comfort zone. We obeyed God and faithfully dropped in the amount we promised. Ten days later, I received an email from my HR manager regarding my annual performance. I was given the maximum bonus, which is three times what I thought I deserved, and about 20 times what we gave in the offering. We thought we would share this to encourage other believers that whatever we give God he would definitely multiply in return. Another testimony. Hi, Pastor Payne, hope you're well. Wanted to email you about a financial miracle during the conference at offer, the offering at conference, sorry. I had set an amount of money I wanted to give, but I felt God tell me to give, and it was, it was more. I didn't really want to give that much, but I gave the larger amount anyway. A few weeks later, I got the opportunity to move branches at work which I had been asking God for for six months. I got a yearly pay rise, which is exactly 20 times the amount I gave at conference. Just wanted to give God praise for these miracles. Thank you. Let's give God praise as the ushers come. Father, I want to encourage you to give. You can give online. You can write a check to the potter's house. You can give cash. But there's people here, God's dealing with you to cross into a transcendent dimension right now. There is that scatters and yet increases. And if you don't have it with you and you, you want to participate, write it down on a piece of paper. And in seven days, you have it back marked for Tuesday. Let's believe God for a miracle. Father, I plead the blood over this conference body. I bind the spirit of mammon and covetousness and unbelief. I lose faith. I lose a transcendent dimension on every person that gives. Bless both gift and giver. God, do a miracle for the Prescott Church in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. The Lord bless you as you give. And sing that song as the coming of the Lord. As the coming of the Lord draws near. Saints will shout amen as they meet him in the air, and the saints will shout amen. Jesus Christ.
Christ is coming back, burning me, burning me, burning me. Let the fire of the Holy One burn in me, burn in me, burn in me. Let the fire of the Holy One burn in me. Your words like a fire. Words like a fire burning in my soul. Burn up the dross, bring forth the gold. Burn in me, burn in me. Let the fire of the Holy One burn in me, burn in me, burn in me, burn in me. Let the fire. You feel like a fire shut up in my bones. Consume me, Lord. Make me roll. Burn in me. Burn in me. Let the fire of the old one more time. God. Man, we are greatly privileged to have Pastor Joe Campbell with us tonight, and we are especially glad to have, we're always glad, but this time is special. Any of you that don't know, last year in the Sydney airport, his heart stopped, and uh, he collapsed there, but God provided a doctor that was right, standing right next to him and brought him back to life because God has more business for him to conduct on his behalf. Thank God. And so we are very, very excited. Now Pastor Campbell is giving Roman a run for his money. He is starting evangelist meetings called Once Dead. And uh, or he can join Roman and they can be thrice dead and they can do it together. But let's tell Pastor Joe Campbell, we are very, very glad that he's here tonight. Appreciate it, Joe. Appreciate you. Thank God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone who has prayed for myself and Connie. Uh, I told Connie, probably the only reason we're alive is God's people are praying. If you have your Bible tonight, Exodus chapter 3, uh, there's an interesting facet of human nature. We love to see people make a comeback. Rocky 3, the famous comeback movie. And the story, there's filled with pain, disappointment, despair. Rocky's knocked out. Mr. T says he's a paper champion. His manager, Mickey, has a heart attack, dies. His wife, Rocky's wife, Adriana, she's an emotional, she's in tears. And the movie script, Rocky at his lowest, he's washed out, he's finished. He's a broken man, he's a failure. And then the movie. Maybe we could. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this movie, in 1982, worldwide, $270 million. Because there's something in the human heart and our nature 
Life is about making comebacks. Somewhere you will need to make a comeback. And so this evening, I want to look at the chemistry of comeback. And I want to look at Moses. If we can do that. In Exodus chapter 3. Verse number 4. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, he's talking about Moses, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. God, we come tonight by your blood, by your power, the Holy Ghost and grace. God, I'm asking you once again this evening to minister. Stir your people, God. I'm asking you to bind up the brokenhearted, those that find themselves bound, broken. I'm asking God tonight, stir, call, renew purpose, passion. All you do tonight, God, be to your glory. God, give us nations, kindred tongues, and people as an inheritance. We're so grateful all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. The chemistry of the comeback. First of all, man has to have a purpose. Purpose gives meaning to life. There's achievement. There's something I have to do. There's accomplishment. It's a reason for living. There's something bigger than me. And I have a part to play. I have a role in this thing we call the vision. You see, purpose beyond self is powerful. When God talks about purpose, and I tonight, I'm not talking about quality of life. I'm talking about something that's bigger than you. It's bigger than a house. It's bigger than a career. It's bigger than any toy you can ever purchase. I'm not talking about comfort. I'm not talking about status. I'm not talking about a life without problems or pain. I'm not talking about quality of life. I'm talking about changing lives. I'm talking about changing society, nations. 1968, Kankakee, Illinois. Connie and I, our marriage was a nightmare from hell. We're partying like crazy. I'm sitting the back porch where my mom and dad lived. I'm depressed. Connie and I are separated at the time. My mother come out and she said, Joe, she said, are you okay? And I can remember saying, Mom, there has to be more to life and what I'm living. And there was. But you'll never find it. I'm not talking about something you can find in the world. 1 John 2, 15 and 16, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. The pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. See, we're not just called to survive and maintain. We're called to create, to build, to become. We have purpose to change the world. See, people's lives changed. Converts to build the church, make disciples, evangelize. What matters most to you? You see, when we talk about kingdom purpose, this is when God's vision becomes personal to you. Purpose is about future. The possibilities, what's ahead. It's about tomorrow many times. 
It's about what can be if I'll simply live for God. And as we've heard, totally surrender myself to God. In our text, God confronts Moses, a man that's failed. Forty years, backside of the desert. And when he confronts him, he confronts him with purpose. He gets his attention and has a conversation. He basically says, Moses, there's a need. There's people, your people. And they're in desperation. You see, there's no greater purpose in all of life than God's purpose. And again, purpose is personal. I can do something for God, Exodus 3, 7, and 8. The Lord said, I've surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I've heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the Egyptians to bring them up from that land to a good land. And then this powerful call to purpose, come now, I will send you that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Can God send you tonight? Can God still send you? Can God speak to you tonight and in this Bible conference? Can God visit you and display purpose before you? The thing about purpose about calling, it can be so unexpected. It can come like I believe Moses, out of nowhere. You come to conference, minding your own business, having a great time going out to eat. Maybe you've been sponsored, you haven't eaten so well in months. (laughs) I know what that's like. Here Moses, 40 years, he's 80 years old, he's been off of the radar, he has a wife, he has family, has two sons, he has business, and no doubt to many, life is good. And then God steps so unexpectedly right into the arena of your life and his and declares purpose. Moses, I want to send you. God begins to speak. See, purpose is the God factor. It's beyond us. It's greater than us. What's your purpose? It's Isaiah crying out in the temple, Here am I, O God, send me. Again, I ask you tonight, can God send you? You see, the battle with comeback, it's so mental. God presents purpose, but our history, our circumstances, Moses, the failure, the defeats, as we've heard this morning, Pastor Foley and again, Pastor Payne, the despair, the time factor. You can hear it in Moses' voice when his conversation with God. Who am I that I should go? I don't qualify. This is the voice of his past speaking. When I say, In verse 13, the God of your fathers has sent me. And they say, what is his name? You can hear his history speaking. 
Suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. I'm slow of speech. Listen, God, I've tried this before 40 years ago. It was a disaster. Someone said despair is suffering without meaning or purpose. But many times the comeback, and it's displayed in the movie, it's a mind battle. It's the fear. It's the miles. It's the years. It's the people, the words that have been spoken, the feelings, the failure. The purpose has to conquer the past, the pain of your past. I'll be 82 in May. You know the problem with old age? It's all about nostalgia to many people because they see no future, they have a tendency to live in the past. We're here conferences about purpose. It's about calling, it's about destiny, it's about vision, it's about possibilities. But can he still send you? Purpose is desperately needed to make a comeback. The second in the chemistry is passion. Your purpose demands and calls for passion, this strong emotion, a driving conviction, to be compelled to desire. Godly passion is a moral issue. It's a God quality. Jesus, the zeal of thy house has eaten me up. The nature of our God is he's passionate. Exodus 3, to the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. The bush burned but was not consumed. Hebrews 12, 29, our God is a consuming fire. Jesus crying out, Oh, Jerusalem, 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 how I would gather you as a mother hen gathers her chicks. But you would not. You can feel the heart and the passion of God. Passion is powerful. We cannot lose. And this is many times in making a comeback. Passion has to be restored. That desire to pursue This is not going to be the last chapter. I refuse, as we heard Pastor Foley so aptly this morning, this is not going to be the last chapter. Passion is powerful and it's contagious. Two disciples on the road to Emmaus, Jesus has been crucified. They've given up. It looks like everything's finished. They're no doubt discouraged. They're returning home. It's not working for me. It's over. Jesus, the Bible says in Luke 24, 15, himself drew near and went with them. They broke bread, had some conversation, but listen to these men's words. In verse 32, they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us? while he talked with us and they turned around and returned to Jerusalem. Godly passion is a desire harnessed for his purpose. Michael Jordan, October 7, 1993, he announced his retirement from the NBA. He said, I'm leaving basketball The desire is just not there anymore. The sense of motivation is gone. Oh, I'm on the court. I know how to play the game. But the passion. Does your bush still burn? 
If not, this is what conference is, part of the design. God can rekindle. The Holy Ghost and fire can fall. And I prayed, God, let your fire fall in this place tonight. The nature of time and life has the ability to rob passion. The bush begins to burn out. You feel overwhelmed. It's too much. Mentally drained, emotionally exhausted. It's people, it's their rebellion, it's their resistance, it's their criticism. It's their lack of appreciation many times. It's the disappointment of pouring yourself into someone's life. And they walk away like you don't even exist. And when you lose passion, you just kind of begin to go through the motions. You take hit after hit. The joy begins to fade. The drive and the zeal. It's like the old story. Sunday morning, the wife's trying to get her husband up to go to church. Honey, wake up, wake up, wake up. He's grumbling and groaning, putting the pillow over his head. She's pressing him. She said, it's time for church, get up. He said, I'm not going this morning. She said, honey, you have to go, you're the pastor. The demonic will drive you to the backside of life and rob your passion. Jeremiah is a picture of comeback. And you hear Jeremiah in chapter 20. I heard many mockings, fear on every side. They struck me, they put me in stocks. I'm in derision daily. He said, I've had them enough, it's too much. But listen to this so familiar verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. That can be you, that can be me. Enough is enough. But then he says something very interesting. His word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back. I couldn't hold it back. I had to speak. That's passion. Passion will drive you to pursue and finish purpose. It's critical in the chemistry of making it come back. It's not over. I can get back in the ring. I the tiger one more time. You just, the music just makes you want to fight. Okay. The words rise up. It's the thrill of the fight. It's hanging tough. It's staying hungry. It's overcoming adversity. It's rising up to the challenge. Michael Jordan, March 19, 1995. Those famous two words in the NBA world I'm back. My passion is renewed for the love of the game, and he won three more championships. If he can do it for a basketball, surely we can do it for God. This can possibly be one of the greatest struggles and difficulties of life. I see the need. God, I know what you're asking me to do. 
but I'm not sure it's still in me. I remember that conversation. I believe Pastor Payne was there. I believe even maybe Pastor Foley were talking to Pastor Wayman Mitchell in the men's rally in Phoenix. We're encouraging him. Australia's in a crisis. We're encouraging him to go. And then I, I believe these, these men, and he looked at me, at, and we're standing there. He and I, he says, Joe, I'm not sure it's in me. He's 80 years old. At that time, I was in my 60s, and I thought, of course it's in you. <laughs> now I'm 80, I know exactly what he was talking about. <laughs> he said, I'm not sure it's in me. But the founder, he went. And I believe Pastor Payne said he accomplished in six months what it would have taken me six years to accomplish in restoring the work in the ministry. I want you to think with me for a moment about something. Comeback may be your greatest challenge, but also it may be your greatest victory, your greatest accomplishment, your greatest reward. Moses' legacy lived behind his comeback. And the problem many times when you're making the fight of that comeback, you don't have a clue. He's there that day having to make a decision, this conversation with God. He doesn't see the end of the story at that point. And many times, most of the time, neither do we. The book of Exodus, 40 chapters. First chapter is basically an introduction. The second chapter, Moses is born, raised in Pharaoh's house, and flees to the wilderness. The next 38 chapters of Moses' life are after the comeback. What's waiting for you? What's hiding? It's mentioned this morning, Pastor Mitchell twice said, I'll quit. And yet all of this came about after the comeback. Is your greatest chapter waiting to be written? But you're going to have to fight through. Tony and Rosa Freitas, they go way back to Yuma many, many years ago. They were out of the ministry for about 20 years. He's had two knee replacements. Just recently in McAllen Conference, if you'd show the picture of them, they were launched back to the Philippines at age 71. And you got an excuse? I think 71 years old. I'm standing there with them in the conference. Been out of the ministry for close to two decades. They pioneered two churches that are today leadership churches many years ago in the Philippines. At 71, and I remember having this conversation with him. He said, Pastor, I, I don't know. He said, I, I've had all kinds of surgeries and I've had this and had that. And, but he said, I, I believe I can do it again. Come on. Yeah. Is that you? You're not 70. You're 27. <laughs> Shame on you. I want to mention one last ingredient is the people ingredient. Moses needed Aaron. Many times there's other people that are critical in our comeback. Much of ministry is about helping people recover. A word of encouragement. You're not alone. I'm with you, church is with you. It may be your wife, maybe a brother, maybe your pastor, family, church. Peter failed horribly, 
horribly cursed, denied even, but Jesus sent a word to him. Go tell my disciples, Mark 16 said, and Peter, Jesus is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. God says to Moses' resistance, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. Look, he's also coming out to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. God will ordain. God will appoint people to be there for you. In the steps, in the equation of come back. Moses, I'm putting Aaron by your side. Power, fellowship, headship, relationships. Would Moses have made it if not for Aaron? Who's your Aaron? Maybe a stranger. Pastor Greg mentioned September the 4th. I'm on my way to preach a Bible conference, Pastor Rob Waltz in Sydney. I had no symptoms, no pain really, no dizziness, no cognitive, nothing. I get off the plane, I go to get my bag, I'm standing there talking to Connie on the phone, and I said, I'm a little dizzy, and I collapsed. A guy took the phone, said, who is this? Said, I'm his wife, said, he's not breathing. She's in the States. There was a medical doctor there. I've never seen him, I don't know him, but they tell me he immediately began to give me CPR. Hospital, St. Thomas Hospital, 15, 20 minutes away. Number one hospital in all of Australia for cardiac arrest and stents. Comeback is made possible in his will. I'm at home. I'm speaking with Rob. Connie's not it's been a horrible battle the last few years, and I'm, I'm hesitant to even go to Sydney. I'm talking to Rob, and I'm saying, he said, look, Joe, you've got to come. You've got to come. COVID, you weren't able to come. You have to come. You have to come. And Connie's looking at me, and she can hear the conversation. I get him She said, you've got to go. I think if I'd have been home, she wouldn't have given me CPR. (laughs) Think of all the places I could have been. I mean, think of the chemistry of the timing. This hospital, right through a little tiny, put four stents in my heart right here. That medical doctor, they, they assume, he was on the flight with me, waiting. For, God's making a call for you tonight. God wants to restore passion. Listen, come back as a part of the kingdom. This book, the Bible, is filled with men and women who took hits and staggered. Our fellowship is filled with testimonies of men and women who made a comeback. I close. I'm laying in the hospital bed, kind of coming out of the you know, they've, they've had me drugged up. And I'm laying there. And I prayed a prayer. I said, God, if you spared me for something, don't let me miss it. I said, please, God, if you've spared me for something, don't let me miss it. And I say tonight, God, don't let you miss it. Don't miss what God has for you. Again, I repeat myself, 
Who knows what's living behind the pain, the agony, the struggle, the hit, but who knows what's living just on the other side of the comeback. I ask you to bow your head with me this evening. I mentioned in the sermon 1968, my marriage was a nightmare. It's filled with alcohol, drugs, and sanity. I said, Mom, there has to be more to life than what I'm living. But I have no clue how to find it until like February 1971. I'm sitting in a church service just like you are this evening. I didn't intend to go to church that night. I was angry and mad at someone. And my wife said, well, let's just go to church. And I said, okay. I, she had gotten saved. Connie had gotten saved. And I went to church that night. And I was sitting in the very last row. And the love of God, the grace of God began to be so real to me. I would saw my wife change. She had talked to me about Jesus. You're here tonight Sin is so deadly. Its wages are death. Sin. Sin will tear you up. Sin will destroy everything you love and hold valuable. Sin will make you miserable. It is torment. Those many years ago, that night I prayed a prayer a child could pray. And Jesus heard it. God, forgive me. God, I don't know. I don't know anything. I didn't know nothing about the Bible. I knew nothing about church. Uh, I never imagined I'd ever be a preacher. But that night I prayed a prayer. And something happened. I was forgiven. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, loved you and I so much. He said, I'll give my life that you can be forgiven, that you can be saved. And that's just the beginning. Then he has a life. He has a purpose that you can live. He has a freedom. You're here tonight before we do anything else. I wonder how many in this place you'd say, Pastor Campbell, that's what I need. I'm tired of, tired of chasing insanity tired of living with no purpose. I'm unsaved. I'm lost. I'm tormented. I'm bound. You'd say, Pastor Campbell, I want to pray tonight. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. That's you this evening. You'd lift your hand right now that I could see it. Just lift your hand. That's me. I'm unsaved. I'm not right with God. Here's my hand. You'd just lift your hand and say, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. I need Jesus. I'm not saved. I'm not living for God. Help me, ushers. Yes, I see that hand. God bless you. Thank you. Who else? Who else? That's me. That's me. I see another hand. God bless you. Thank you. God's speaking to people. That's you this evening. That's me, Pastor. You're here. God and His grace and mercy has brought you here this evening. There's no miracle in all of life like being born again. You say, that's what I want. That's what I need. I need a new life. You'd lift your hand. You'd lift your hand. That's me. I need to repent. I want to ask Jesus Christ. I want to experience God's love and grace and mercy. Who else? You'd lift your hand. You'd join these. Anyone else? Backslider. You need to make a comeback sin. You need to come home. You need to recover. You'd lift your hand this evening. You'd say, that's me. That's me, Pastor. That's me. That's me. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. I need to recover. Yes, God bless you. Who else? God bless you. Who else? That's me. That's me. Maybe you're playing with sin that's deadly. You can be in church, raised in church, but there's only one cure for sin and that's repentance. You'd say, that's me, Pastor. That's me this evening. Here's my hand. I want to join these. I want to join these. I want to join these. You lifted your hand. Would you lift it up and hold it? Lift it up and hold it. Over here, you lifted your hand. 
you're sincere with God, I believe you are. Back here in the back, you lifted your hand. Would you lift it again? Thank you. Over here, you lifted your hand. I'm going to ask you just to stand. It's hard for me to see. Would you stand and come? Someone's going to pray with you. 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 Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? God's going to help you. God's going to help you. Wait in just a moment. Let you get, make your way to the altar. Someone to pray with them. I'm going to ask you to stand with me all over this building. Message about come back. Message about calling and purpose. God's dealing with you. I want to open these altars. You want to come and find a place to pray. You want to come and talk to God. Can God speak to you again? God had spoke to Moses, no doubt, 40 years before. But can he speak to you again? Maybe you're just going through the motions. Your passion needs to be restored. Rain in me. Oh, Ramasanda. You're at your seat. You may be seated. Oh, God. Let God touch you. Rain in me. Sovereign Lord. God, rain in me. Captivate my heart. Oh, Ramasanda, la 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 sanda, rebo shikaya. Let your kingdom come. Establish there your throne. Let your will be done. Reign in me, O Ramashatai. Sovereign Lord. Reign in me, sovereign Lord, reign in me, captivate my heart, let your kingdom come, establish there your ask you a question can God call your name not just to have a com- but can God call your name to his purpose tonight today Pastor Payne gave a call can God call your name I'll never forget, I was 46 years old in the old church down on Washington Street in Chandler. I felt a presence out in the sanctuary. I thought it was someone was there. I got up and walked out, no clue. God was there. I fell down at the altar and God said, I'm going to place you, I'm going to put you in Malaysia. running 300 people, great church. Can God call your name? Can God speak to you? A city, a nation, a new level of ministry, a new sphere, a new place, because this is where purpose 
is ignited. Can he call your name like only God can? May seem so unreasonable, so unexpected. But you know it's him. God's calling your name. Been speaking to you last night, today, tonight. For kingdom purpose. I want you to stand to your feet. You may be like I was, pastor in a fantastic church. Living my dream. It's one thing for him to call your name. It's another thing for you to obey. There was resistance in Moses. Perhaps there's resistance in you. Perhaps not. Legacy lives behind purpose. Nothing in all of life like living in His purpose and in His presence. Nothing in all of life. Nothing. But His purpose is only lived in His will. And that's sometimes where we miss it. Moses is not in God's will. But he responded. And legacy began to be lived. I want to pray with you. And this is, this is before God. This is beyond any contract you'll ever sign to buy something. This is a God factor. I want you to pray. I want you to say, Lord Jesus... In this place tonight, in this time frame, God, I open my voice and I declare from my heart, here am I. God, send me. I will go, open doors, order my steps. God, give me a city, give me a nation. Give me a people. God, I hear you calling my name. And I lay aside all resistance, all rebellion, all materialism. And I lay down my life for your purpose tonight. In Jesus' name, would you give God praise? Hallelujah. Go to your pastor. Speak to your pastor. Tell him what God is speaking to you. I want to pray one other prayer this evening. I want to pray about passion. Passion. I've been praying since I had this, this cardiac arrest. Uh, my cardiologist uh, told me in Chandler, he said, uh, Mr. Campbell, do you know you're a miracle? He said that about three times to me. It's only about 6% of 60-year-olds live through cardiac arrest. It's different than a heart attack. Heart attack, your heart's under attack, but it doesn't stop. He said, your heart stops. Only about 6% of 60-year-olds live. And now that 6%, only about 3 or 4% don't end up in a nursing home. 
Because when your heart stops, oxygen ceases to go to your brain and you lose cognitive. You lose the ability to function, think. It said you're a miracle. And I prayed. I've been praying ever since. I said, God, when I speak, may people feel your presence. God, when I speak, may they know that you are alive and real. There are men and women here, you love God, but you, if you be honest, the passion. That's the problem with life, can drain your godly passion. It's not that you don't love God, it's not that you don't know what you need to do, not that there's not even some, but the passion the zeal has dissipated. It's been drained. You've given yourself and given yourself and given yourself. And tonight, you'd say before God, God, I need you to restore fresh Holy Ghost and fire in me. I need a new, I need a bush to burn in my soul. That's you this evening. I want you to lift your hand. I need passion, God. I need a restored passion. I need a restored passion. I've been praying. I've been praying. I've been praying. God, let your fire fall in this altar tonight. I want you to begin to cry out to God. Father, by the blood and the Spirit. Oh, Spirit of God. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fall in this place, God. Fall upon the hearts and minds and soul of this people. God, I'm asking you to restore kingdom passion. God, may our mouth be filled with passion. May our mind be filled, our soul, our spirit. Spirit of God, I'm asking you, Lord, send the fire even now. Oh, Ramashandalalavaremoshikaya. Oh, Ramamashandaya. Oh, Ramashandalalavaremoshikaya. Oh, God, Oh, spirit of fire and passion. God, saturate these people. God, burn through us. Burn through us, oh God. Burn through us, I pray. Burn through us, God. Ignite us for your purpose.
Hallelujah, God. Oh, Reboshi, Reboshi, God, you can do the Reboshi. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank God. We are going to be dismissed tomorrow morning. We're going to be praying here at 8 o'clock in this room is a prayer room. Let's lay hold of God and you do what God told you to do. God bless you. You can be dismissed.